Hello, Ricardo here. When I first started painting, my main problem was the color choice. Like, how do I paint this miniature? What colors should I choose? Is red good here? Should I paint this other element blue? Will it work? Will it clash? And often, it clashed. I didn't know at the time why, I know now, but I had this, this issue and when I do my classes, they, the students keep asking me, how should I paint this? Well, if you have this problem, the answer for you could be the limited palette. The limited palette is a restricted set of paints that you put on your palette and you derive every other color from those. You don't go out, you don't pick another color from the shelf, you mix what you have. And with this in mind, you will never have a clashing color problem anymore because everything will have an echo of the other paints that you are using so everything is in harmony and if you're interested in how to do this today is the day and i'll show you how When it comes to using a limited palette, choosing your colors carefully is the key. Rather than simply choosing the three primary colors and black and white, you should choose a different version of each primary skewed in the direction that you want to represent in your uh, miniature, either cold or warm, for example. In this case, we have black, white, blue green shade magenta and the poison green from Fabrizio Russo so this is a, a cold palette actually so this is a first example that I'm making we are using a magenta instead of a red and a green that is a yellowish green an acid an acid green instead of a yellow. This is because if we used the pure primary red and a yellow, we would actually can recreate every color. Instead, with the limited palette, what we want is actually the opposite. We want to be limited and not able to recreate everything so that everything is shifted in a direction that is always coherent. So when you mix, this color we we will achieve something that is always in the cold mode and this is very important and i will show you some example with it so i picked a piece of paper so i can put some colors in there so we have the black the white the blue magenta and this yellow it's a, it's a very strange color it's a green or a yellow it could look even a little bit brownish so we'll try to create mixes with this so, for example, we want to do a, a skin tone, presumably. So we'll pick the magenta, the yellow, and the white. Any more white. And here we have a, a cold skin tone. Like we can make it lighter. Maybe with more yellow because it's going warmer in the in the lights perhaps. And here we have it. Now I put it on the on the paper so you can see. So 
So this is the result. And let's say we want to create a, a blue gown, for example, for this person. So we can pick our blue that maybe is too, is too strong and we want to make it darker. So we can add some black and blue. Maybe a little bit of red to make it more purplish. And then we want to go up in light. We add a little bit of white and a little bit of our green. Too much. But okay. Here's a, a progression. Maybe I need more white. But the, the palette in general will work in, uh, in the same way that you are used to paint, except you will need to just use the colors that you have there and mix and mix and remix all the time to, to achieve your, uh, your mixes. But in this way, what you have is something that keeps being coherent. And this is the trick, this is the important part. And to, um, to be able to do that, you need mostly pure colors, meaning not pre-mixed with white, for example, or other colors, so you can always have a, a predictable result. This is super important, being predictable in this. So let's say now that we want to have something on the red spectrum on this model. So we cannot go redder than the magenta, so it's already cold. And then we make some lighter parts with white and a little bit of our yellow. See, even more white to become lighter and lighter and this is actually similar to the skin tone and for the shadows we have the magenta and then we go down we mix a little bit of the of the yellow and the blue because they are together yellow and blue they do a green so it's complementary and we get we get a shade of the magenta from dark to light. So, get it here. And we get this. That is uh, our red shade. And now we want to create our greens for this. And we have our yellow and a little bit of our blue. And we have this green. We end up with this green. It is a, it is a good, strong and vibrant green, but still toned inside this type of palette. So nothing clashes. And everything is tuned with the palette and this is important when when you reach later stages of painting of course you can if you feel it you can add other type of colors to your uh, to your palette like secondaries for example but it is very important that you start in this way and you you add the colors later, at later stages, to fix eventually something that you, you may feel the need. But starting like this will result in coherent harmonies. And I'll show you with other type of palettes, this, this thing. But I want to, I want to show a, a thing now, so that you may understand that. Pick up a, a real red right now. And you'll see what I mean when it's in, uh, put in conjunction with these other colors. You'll see how different and clashing it is. 
Sí. If I if I paint a red cloth, a red fabric, instead with this progression to go together with these other colors, I do it with this red. Still with this type of yellow things improves a little bit, but it is more clashing. The reflection is not good. But yeah, you can see that this red is way different than this type of progression. And this will pull out your imagination from this cold atmosphere into this warm stuff that is not really what you want. This is why this palette is super useful. And these are, uh, this is just an example of colors, of course. Only an example. You can make your own. But this is how I work with the palettes. I choose a direction and I skew all my primaries in a direction. This is how I would do a cold palette. It is just um, one of the many. You could substitute this yellow with other type of yellows, for example, or this with even more purple. Is up to you. And every, every painting that you do, based on how you do this initial palette, will change in the feeling. So I advise you to, to try. And use pure colors, because otherwise, by mixing and remixing your painting, your, your paints, you will get more and more gray. And this you, you don't want, of course. This is not why we use the limited palette. Hey, do you want to know what paints we use in our miniature painting? Chimera Colors is the answer. They are single pigment, super saturated and matte acrylics. When mixed, they give pure vibrant results without any unwanted gray tones. And because it's easier to desaturate than to saturate, you have complete control over your color choices. Upgrade to Chimera Colors for your next work and see the difference for yourself. Link in the description. So as you can see I changed the palette. This time I have always black and white. I have a red, a turquoise and a warm yellow. All by Chimera Colors by the way. So these are really pure pigmented, single pigment paints. And this is very useful for this exercise. So this warm palette is very different to the to the other one. So let's start as we as we said with the with the skin tone like before. So a skin tone is some red, some yellow, and then white. Maybe it's too saturated because the yellow is too saturated, okay, let's put a little bit of our blue and desaturate it a little. Okay. And then when you want to go lighter, put some extra white, some extra yellow, too much clearly, <laughs> but it's easy to correct, we just add some red. A little bit of our blue to the saturate. And a little bit of white. So th this thing is to is to create a, a skin tone that is in a warm ambience, like for example a desert. And skewing the colors all the way will help us with that. And now we can compare with what we did before. This was our skin tone before, this is our now. And it is warmer, everything is warmer compared to before. So a modulation of red, so we have red. I have need a little bit more on the palette, of course. I use it a lot. Okay. We have the red. We want to, to make it darker. We need a, a green. 
so we use our our blue maybe with a touch of yellow maybe even a little bit of black and then we go towards the light with a touch of white and a touch of yellow and we have this modulation of red that would be different than what we had before you see these are two different red situation and now that we have these in place in this paper oops, this one doesn't look as red anymore because we have a stronger red here right and this is the trick all these paint swatches that we did before they are meant to be used alone without this second part the moment i remove the second part it is becoming more red and more believable the moment i add the other one this is way redder at this point actually it could even be more red okay yes this at this point looks like burgundy uh, like a wine red and this is mm, way redder and this comparison is where the limited palette works because when you create something with a limited palette you remove the comparison you remove it and this is why all the colors will work together all of these will work together all of these other will work together but you need to look at only one, one at a time that's the trick so green This is a different type of green compared to before. And the blue, we don't have a real blue, we have a turquoise. So yeah, this will be our blue. And you cannot you cannot escape this type of of warm colors all around. So everything will be warm. Even the blues are warm. See, if you add some white and some yellow, this is going to be our blue, that is a greenish blue, a turquoise blue. And this is probably the most famous limited palette, that is the Zorn palette. Um, it's named after Anders Zorn, one Swedish, I think, painter, very, very good painter that developed this palette, I, I also put it here and this black, vermilion, uh, yellow ochre and white this is super limited because instead of having three colors plus black and white we only have two now black will act as a blue so when you do mixes with this for example for a skin tone it's fairly easy because you have these two that go together the yellow grey is a little bit more desaturated this palette is skewed towards the saturation so you have a skin tone like this and if you want to desaturate a little bit you have a touch of black and you want to go lighter you add white and more yellow and you have a fairly neutral desaturated skin tone so i put it here and there you have it as you can see this three skin tones are extremely different 
Now, if you want to have a green with this palette, here starts the challenge. So to have a green, you add blue to the yellow. So you have this ochre that is our yellow. In this case, I use the honeymoon yellow instead of a um, yellow ochre, but they are very similar. And you have to add black, because it's our blue. So you have this strange, desaturated green. And this thing is very interesting because it's um, it forces you to think out, outside the box to create your uh, your things. You know, I need more more yellow. It is super super interesting. So this would be our our greens. And our blues, oh my god, our blues. We don't have blue, so we need to invent something here. So we, we create a gray. And maybe with a touch of yellow in it even. But as you can see, strangely enough, this, together with all these warm things, is starting to look blue instead of a grey. If we put a blue, a real blue near it, it will be instantly grey. But, hey, this is creating an illusion already. It's, uh, it, it's, it's like a little bit of magic, because when you have everything so warm all around, well, uh, this is somewhat bluish. But only somewhat, because the moment you put a blue near it, oof, no, doesn't work anymore. So here is how the zone palette works. It will create the saturate work on the warm side, and it's, mm, it's, a, it's a good way of painting for a certain type of style. So you have to, to just experiment with this type of things. You can always substitute some things like for example this for a more warm yellow if you want, or this black, because this is not a real ivory black, it's a carbon black, so it's more neutral. Uh, an ivory black is a little bit bluer, so you will get more bluish result in this. But it doesn't matter, it's, a, it's, about, it's about being limited and experimenting with it. So, um, when, when you work with these type of things at one point, you may feel that you need to add a little bit of color, of more color. So um, it's, uh, it's just um, a matter of trying and putting together other colors later. For example, this to add a, a darker burgundy red, you, just, you, you might need just to add a little bit of black in there. So yes, this is how the palette work. How would you use it? I would, in miniature, start to paint with a limited palette like this, and I always do, these or the other ones that I showed, and then start to add some extra color, extra oomph, let's say, to your painting at later stages, when you are in the refining part. But you start with this, and if you start with this, it's impossible that your color clashes. They will not clash, simply, it's impossible. So, if you have trouble deciding your colors, learn to mix, mix them, and do a limited palette for yourself. You will surely see improvement in your color schemes. Thank you for watching, that's all for today. If you liked the video, in the channel you will find more videos on palette control, how to mix paints, how to achieve skin tones and other things that may interest you. And in the future I will do more because there is a lot more to explore. But for now, have a great day, keep painting and see you next time!